Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are here today to work on the fancy part of the slit slot needle book. I'm going to make a fancy little piece to put on the cover. This is just uh, something that I've done a while ago. It's encrusted embroidery, it's just loose stitching. So I would like to follow that. But I want to use, these are my, my embroidery colors that I've chosen. Some greens and pinks will pick out right away. But I have this piece from that anthropology jacket. And let's cut a piece for the front and a cut a piece for the back. I like how this looks like a flower. And I want it a, it's hard to see around this camera. I want it to fit on here. So I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to go with the top. Is that square? Top and the bottom. So let's just cut that off. This part somehow will be for the back. And this will be for the front. So... Is that square? I want to do some of that loose embroidery on. Okay, let's just fold this over and cut. Hopefully this is a, a rectangle. Okay, that looks nice. So how do I want my flower? Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to leave that, that as is. This will be sitting on the front, and we're going to do some encrusted embroidery on it. On the back, we are also going to do some encrusted embroidery. But what are we going to do? Okay, for one thing, it's too wide. Let's, um, let's take this off. I'll have to think on this bottom on the back portion, and I'll keep that to the side, because I want to do the front part now. Carol from Ontario, Canada, has expressed an interest in these needlebooks. So, Carol, if you would like this needlebook, when it's finished, this one will be put in my Etsy shop. And I am not going to charge an extravagant amount for it because it's, I don't know, it's, I'm going to say it's not perfect. It's the OCD in me. Um, it's as perfect as I can make it, meaning I have to change threads. So there's, a, there's knotted threads here. That's perfect. Well, at and you're going to see knotted threads because we join. And yes, you're going to see knotted threads there. So I don't know. Uh, that's just the way it is. It's a hand stitched, hand stitched needle book. And we're going to sew on the cover. So because I'm working on the cover like this somehow, let's take it apart because it's easier to sew on a, on a, flat piece of fabric than it is in a book like this. So that's the back inside cover. This is the front inside cover. My two pieces in the center are the continuation of the front piece and a continuation of the back piece. So let's just take, I want this front cover off. So let's just take that piece off and let's put our book to the side. So this, this is the front cover. Let's see if it is long enough. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm doing something like this for the cover. So again, Carol, you're going to have to let me know if you want me to reserve this for you. Do I cut off the bottom? I'm going to keep that little bit. It's just, I like a similar amount. And I'm following the design of this flower. 
This is wool. Wool from an anthropology jacket. I hate to tell you how much that jacket cost me years ago when I was working. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so the very first step. When I did this, I used thread, just basic gray thread, and I did tacking stitches like Sue Spargo tells us to do. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep doing that with my regular thread. So what I'm going to do here, let's see if I can, I just want to get this out of the way, this this fabric. So I'm going to roll it in on itself. And ooh, this is a nice long one. So, and I'm just going to get that out of the way there. So it's easy for me to hold. So I'm going to put this on and I'm looking, making sure it's the same distance from my stitching. It's about hard to tell maybe one centimeter which is what half an inch maybe okay so I'm going to just do just a running stitch except I'm going to do a Kathleen running stitch and I say that because a running stitch a running stitch as you know let's just pin this baby on a running stitch is when you go a running stitch is when you just go in out in out in out and pull your needle and thread through i don't like my spaces the same size as my thread meaning when you look at my work this is I don't know if it's a good or a bad example. This stitch length is longer than this backside piece. Longer, shorter, longer. So it's just a matter of preference. And I get that, I achieve that by just going in, I, it's called piercing your fabric or stabbing your fabric. So I'm coming out with my needle from the backside to the front side and I am, going to eyeball a nice quarter of an inch. I like long stitches. And then I'm going to come up really close. So it's almost, almost out of the same hole. You can see how it's just barely over there. So let's go in and out. Well, not in and out, I have to go stabbing. And I want to go quite quickly because I want to start doing this, what I call encrusted work. So this pe this needle book will have this tiny little bit of encrusted work on it. It takes a lot of thread to a lot of, uh, I used pearl cotton size five. I used a whole, a whole skein of this to go around two of these little needle books. And I thought that was a lot, but I like my size five, meaning the thickness of the thread. And I want to keep using that. I have tried, I, sorry, not I have tried, I have purchased from the antique store an amazing bag of threads. They are specialty threads for doing wool applique or different fancy embroidery. I first seen these embroidery threads on Sue Spargo's site. It's called Very Velvet. They're I think they're 450 US, but when you convert it and have shipping, it's just astronomically priced to get one skein of thread shipped to you to Canada. So what I, I was lucky at the antique store and for six Canadian dollars, 
I got, I didn't count how many there were inside there. Maybe there were 20, maybe there were 15, but there was a lot of them. Not all very velvet. Most of them are ones I would not use. Gold, ver uh, gold variegated, green, Christmas green. It looks like tinsel. Uh, Christmas black, sparkly, snow type tinsel. Um, and I'll show those to you later. So those are the things that I would not use, but there were so some, and not when I say some, there were a good portion of them. I thought I would only use one one thread pack, but I'm gonna use more than one thread pack out of there. Bottom line is, when I resume my uh, Stitch Play series, I'm going to be giving away those threads because I don't need them. But postage, as you know in Canada, is expensive. So how are we gonna do this? I don't know, any suggestions? Leave it that in the description box below. So I would like, to, I don't know, do I just include them in, in these threads in as a thank you gift for people that purchase my journals or, cause I don't, I was asked if I was going to put these in my Etsy store to sell. Well, I don't know if people would pay. I wouldn't, and it's just pretty well the cost of the fabric. So a $375 jacket that you're cutting up is a little pricey. So I'm not gonna, I can't sub, I can't charge lots for this. I can't charge for my time. It's ridiculous when people charge, I don't know, three, four hundred dollars for their for their journals, for their makes, if more than that. Like I think, okay, yes, that's your living. I get it. This is my living too right now, and I can't charge that much because I I couldn't afford to buy it, so how could I afford to sell it? So I don't know what to do. Anyway, this seems like a rambling video. Maybe it is. I could also just, I don't know, I'm thinking any suggestions would be welcomed. Forget my needle books, don't put them in my shop. I don't know, continue with the stitch play. Stitch play doesn't pay my bills. My journals pay my bills. I love doing stitching. I have, I stitch and crochet, I alternate every night. Well, not alternate, I do both, depending on the light here. It's in Canada, it's winter time the sun oh i haven't looked lately 4 30 it get it's kind of hard to see even with a light lamp on with my eyes in my bedroom so i stitch and i crochet i usually do journals during the day again from my bed and what so i have this extra thread bottom line is i want to give it away how do i give it away Postage is expensive. I don't know. We'll see. I like to do more stitch videos, but that, of course, doesn't help me in my bank account. So, uh-oh. Military people must be here to pick up their medals. My husband mounts medals for the military. And we'll see. Stitch play began because I just was practicing and I thought I'd turn on the camera. But I ended up starting a piece and it was like a project piece. I don't, I have tons of different projects started and nothing finished because that's me. I'm a squirrel. Okay, we're finished this. Now it's on to some colored threads. So I just did my Kathleen's running stitch with the longer fabric. I'm sorry, the longer thread and the little bit space. I'm going to tie a knot and cut this off. And now, oh shoot, a maroon, it fell on the floor. Oh well. Okay, I'm gonna start with some, I like these, this is a Y stitch. I wanted, I love the feather stitch doubled and I love the, the blanket stitch doubled is nice. So I wanna start with the feather stitch. Feather stitch, let's take the green and maybe go with some green. So in this, book it's mainly the pinks i love this bright green i absolutely love it there's that 
love that green and I love this green here it's an olive green let's just take that off so those two greens I really like there's the darker one I'm going to stick with the lighter ones for right now so where's my two needles let's get I'm going to start with the darker one and then add the lighter so I take from my right shoulder to the tip of my fingers a length of six stranded embroidery thread and let's do the same with this I hold the tip and I'm going to go to my right shoulder to the tip of my left finger and that is a very long piece and I take like long pieces because I don't like joining I don't like joining so I'm going to keep that there my two pieces my scissors and let's load this up I'm using six strands because I like to see the thread I like to feel the thread I like to feel the texture and I'm going to create something like this on camera so let's go here and I'm doing it in real time so it might be a long video so that one is the light green which I'll work with second the first one is the darker so I'm using two shades of green with this feather stitch okay let's see let's pull this closer to the knot and yes I'm going to have knots on this on the back side of this but I'm going to try to have few of them because my stitching will just be through this top printed wool I won't be securing it to the middle because my it's it's good enough on the outside so I just want to do a feather stitch and a feather stitch I'm going to just go I'm going to follow the design from the tip tip of that dark olive green I'm going to follow that down so let's go start at the top and yes you're going to see that knot back there so we start at the top left make a go straight across somewhat and about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to make sure I don't catch my fabric you can feel with your needle going across I'm going to go down so there's three points like a V and my thread goes underneath my needle okay and where my knee where my thread came out I'm going to go across to the right catching the top fabric in between my two layers of fabric and go down so that I form three points like a V and oh, I must have caught a hair of that underneath and go down I'm gonna go I'm gonna continue where this came up where my thread came out I'm gonna go across and then down so there's three points like a V make sure my needle comes out over top of this thread and I'm going to still keep going in that direction and I'm going to as soon as I pass this color on the fabric then I'll swing over to that side so again the needle goes across about a quarter of an inch and then down about a quarter of an inch at an angle so there's three points and you come out and maybe one more so where the needle come out you go across and down three points and pull okay let's let's go to the left where, where it came out to the left and we're gonna make a V making sure the needle is over top of that working thread and pull and I'm going to go to the right this time right uh, straight across down forming a V 
and pull. Let's look underneath. Yes, I have not caught anything underneath, which is nice. I'm going to go to the left, quarter of an inch, and down, making sure my needle is over my working thread, and I have to pull. Okay, let's go to the right. Ah, hmm, no, let, I'm following this little thing. Let's go to the left again. So from where I came out to the left, quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna go down to that, that um, olive green piece on the fabric. So let's see what I got here. I'm all confused. My thread has to be underneath my nail and I seem to be mixed up. So my thread goes underneath, my working thread goes underneath and my needle goes on top. So now that I'm untangled, I can pull. Perfect. I want to follow that brown line. So I am, or all a green line, straight across, quarter of an inch down and I'm going to put my needle in on that line. Love that. I'm going to continue following the pattern line. So across to the right, and down on that line. I don't want to go too close to the right, so let's go to the left quarter of an inch and on that olive green line make sure your needle is above the working thread and pull okay I'm gonna do one more V to the right making sure my needle is above the working thread and let's just put this, I'm gonna follow this olive green in the background and I'm gonna go right through and anchor it. So that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna turn it around and make my knot at the bottom. I'm gonna cut this off and leave this thread to the side. This is knotted already, this brighter color. When I work, I like to put the darker color underneath and then the lighter color on top. So I'm gonna start here again because I'm going to do like a shadowing effect. So I'm always gonna come out to the right of the needle holes that are already there. So I'm gonna come out just to the right of the needle hole of the darker green that's already there. And I'm just gonna mirror my stitch. I'm gonna do the exact same feather stitch, putting my needle in exactly the same way, a quarter of an inch across, which will bring me just to the right of that thread, picking up that pink fabric and going down just to the right of where it was. So there we go. Sometimes you think you're right next to it, but you're not. You see how there's a little bit more of a gap? That's all right. So we are going to go again. We're following the, we're mirroring this stitch to the right of what's there. Trying only to catch the pink fabric and coming out right next to what's there and we're pulling. And to the right of exactly what's there and to the right of exactly what's there. So it's called mirroring. It looks like two more stitches to the right, down, And this will be the last feather flying to the right. Now we're going to go to the left. 
So we're going to cut this is existing thread here. We're just going to, we always stay to the right of it. And we're going to come out to the right of what's there at the bottom, making sure our working thread is underneath and we pull. Okay, I love how that looks. Can you see how much texture you get? It's just how thick it is, so it's really nice. And let's go to the right. And you come out, you're always just to the right of the previous, the existing feather stitch that you're trying to mimic. So here, we're gonna go to the left. I said a wrong thing. We're gonna to go to the right of that stitch and then to the right of that existing hole. You're always going in and out on the right side of the right-hand side of the existing hole. So this, you're gonna lay down. You're gonna go to the right of where, where that stitch is and you're gonna come out to the right of where that stitch is. So you're it's you're creating a shadow with this thread. You're painting a shadow with the brighter thread. So it's always to the right, close of what's there in between the two layers and coming out to the right of what's there. To the right, go in between the two fabrics of wool and to the, oh yes, I have a good enough thread here to the right. In between, oh, I poke myself to the right. Go in between the fabrics and come out on the right hand side, making sure your working thread is under the needle. I always work with a number one Milner's needle. Everyone has a different preference. That's just, I like it because it's long for my hands to hold on to because my thumb lets go for some unknown reason. And uh, it has a larger eye. So just a couple, one more stitch maybe to the right, under. And we're gonna anchor this thread down right next to what's there. Make sure we don't come up in that knot because you'll pull the threads out of place. Okay, that is nice. I really, really, really like that. Okay. And we're gonna cut that off. Okay, that's my nice green part. Let's try some pinks and let's unthread 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 and let's choose some okay i want this bright pink let's choose this light pink so let's just go with these two pinks here these are embroidery flosses that are no name that I was given, so I can't tell you what numbers they are. So again, I'm gonna choose the, the black, or black, the dark one first. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take the end to my right shoulder and go to my fin left finger. So that's a long piece. And Oh, here it is. <laughs> Lost it. Take it, the end of this new thread from my right shoulder to my left fingertip. It's, yes, it's a long piece. Okay, it's hard looking around the camera here. Let's thread up this light. So what should we go? Mm, let's do the blanket stitch. I did the feather stitch. Let's do the blanket stitch and then we'll do some Feather stitch, or 
Okay, so I did, this piece is not very big, so I did a fly stitch. Um, I like the double running lines, and I have two colors. So I'm going to do some, some, oh, I'm going to go straight down this way curve and go down with some, do I want to do running lines, or do I want to do, let's do the blanket stitch, why not? Okay, and again, I like the lighter color on top, so this one is just going to be ready to go on the side. Let's work with this. I had to squeeze those six threads so they line vertically when on top of each other to feed through there. And, okay, I said I would use a buttonhole stitch. So let's go. This is the buttonhole stitch. Why not? Let's go buttonhole stitch. So I'm going to start arbitrarily. <sighs> arbitrarily right here. So let's, let's go there. On the I'm going on this dark olive line. So a buttonhole stitch, you always start at the top and your needle will be pointing upwards. So if I want my thread to actually to sit like that, the top line will be going like this. I'm gonna go down and I'm just working with this one stitch here. So I'm just gonna place my needle in here just because I, I have OCD, I just want to have that there. And I'm gonna come up, I'm going in between my two layers of fabric so you will not see it in the back. And I'm gonna go up there. That'll anchor the stitch. Again, my working thread is behind my needle and I'm going to lay my thread down where I want it to be and we can go different stitch lengths so let's I'm going to put my stitch length here on this olive color can you even see that and go up here I'm going to put it down so I can see my camera's in the way my camera my iPhone balanced on my light is in the way okay so I'm pulling it snugly I still want that, I'm laying down my thread where I want it to go. And I'm going to go longer. So my threads are going to be irregular. Pull it. My needle is always above my working thread and my thread is gonna go this way. So let's Let's do a short little guy here. Short little guy here. Short stitch. I'm trying to keep them a quarter of an inch apart, my stitches. Again, you know that I can't be consistent if my life depended on it. And I'm varying the stitch length, the vertical stitch length, but I'm trying to keep my horizontal stitch length the same. my thread. I just lay it down to see where I want to go. And I want to have a nice long one here. <coughs> and across. Okay, I have two green threads here. So I want to lay my pink thread above it. So let's just go. There's this end of the green stitch that's coming up here. I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to go just before that green comes out. So when it lays down, my pink will go above it. And let's go beside, right all the way down. Like that. So I kind of create like S shapes or inverted S shapes. I'm going to, oh, I want to go this way. So because I want my thread now, you know what? I'm just going to go straight across here because I'm going to do some, some other stitches up here. So I'm going to go 
to, or in the next area. Keep that just above there. So I'm going to go down in the next area here, right next to it, and up. And this may be the last stitch. So let's go right next to it and up. Oh, I always catch it. Okay, so how do we finish off? Okay, so the, I want my thread. This is like this um, Kathleen's running stitch is to the outside. It's like a frame. So I'm just going to go to the top of that running stitch and go down. Okay, that's how it's going to sit right now. We are going to add a second color in that stitch. And I know I'm going to have lots of loose French knots, so I am going to tie this up for our loose French knots that are coming up. And, okay, this is the light pink, and I think I tied the end. Yes, I did. So we're going to start again, and I'm going to go with my lighter color above the darker color. So I'm going to go right to the edge in, of my of that ecru thread, like so, so I'm within my frame and above that dark pink. So I'm just going there, and I'm lay my thread will be laying across that way, and so I'm going to be going to the right of my stitch, and I'm going to vary. I'm going to go a little bit longer on every single stitch, and my needle will come out just above that pink, so my thread will be parallel to the existing thread. And again, my my working thread is always underneath my knee my needle. So I, I like how it sits like that. Next, I am going to bring this. My needle is going to go right next to it, but down lower. And it's going to come out in between those two threads. So I'm coming out over my, bu my bubblegum pink, but under my ballet pink lighter pink. So again, I'm going to go longer. I'm going to come out in between those two colors. And I'm going to do the same thing here. All of my parallel. There we are. Lay the thread down. Put your thread needle down and go a little bit longer and come up in between those two threads and again parallel with the needle and this thread but I'm going lower just as a matter of preference I'm just stitching over top of the, uh, the thread. I'm just to the side of the thread. I'm mirroring the thread. There's lots of different words you could use. The thread is always going to be, I'm, I'm following it this way. This isn't a rule. This is just a design that I'm doing at the moment. So I want this green to stand out. So I'm going to put my pink, my needle, it's still beside down 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 but i'm not i'm only going to i'm not going to go past that green thread and i'm going to move my pink so i know that it's in between the two and i'm going to pull okay i really like how that's sitting and my needle is parallel go down to the green stitch so it will be longer than the previous pink and oh come on no I'm not going to use pliers because 
if I have to use pliers, I won't do this. Okay. Because then I wouldn't enjoy it. There we are. And I'm going to My thread is parallel, I, parallel to my needle. I'm gonna go, I just don't wanna pass the green. I'm gonna go up parallel and in between the two different colors of thread. I don't know why this is so hard. This is probably no name embroidery floss, which does not have a sheen, which does not um, flow smoothly through the fabric, maybe that's my problem. And again, my needle is parallel and going really down low. Oh, I wanna keep, oh, I wanna keep inside. Okay, let's see if I can go, I'm gonna go right beside him and up inside my, my square. Oh, I think I'm just, oh, I must be in the threads. I wanna keep, this light pink within my running stitch frame. Oh, please, Lord. Please, Lord, help me. I don't know why. Okay, thank you, Lord. There we are. And I'm just going to tack this bubblegum pink. I said a wrong thing, the ballet pink in the frame line so it stays within. And good, I didn't go through my knot. And voila, I think that looks very pretty. Now for some French knots. So let's start with the darker color. Let's tie this knot so we're ready. Okay, you see how I have, okay, I've got to try to mimic this pattern here. I have, I have the buttonhole stitch, two lines of buttonhole stitch. I have one line of, that's the Y stitch, fly stitch, Y stitch. And then I have some lines going here as well. So let's do, what kind of lines, what am I missing? I wanna have areas of X's, areas of French knots and loose French knots, and I wanna have areas of seed stitch. So maybe I want some lines. Do I need another color? Mm, okay, let's go with the, I'm gonna go with the darker, Okay, darker. I want that dark one. Mm. This pops. I'm going to just use this. And I'm going to go. Okay, I am going to use that. So let's just get a big length of that from the tip of my right shoulder down to my fingers left finger so it's a long stitch so i got three let's tie a knot and we are going to do uh, oh i need another needle that's i don't want to take that out what kind do i have this is a real long one that one's really long and those are shorter I want to use the longer one because I just like holding on to longer ones. Okay, let's see. They could be a darning needle. They could be, some of them are darners. Some of them are Milner's needles. Okay, so let's go. I want to have a double line like this. And I'm going to follow what's here and I'm gonna follow what's here. See these two lines. So I'm gonna start inside here. I'm gonna start inside my frame 
and I'm going to go on the left side where the pink is touching the olive green brown. So again, I'm going to do the call it the Kathleen running stitch because I like a small space which is usually just one strand of the wool fabric going across and I'm just going to make the running stitch really space is hardly anything and the oh you know what you will see it through the back because I'm doing my stab stitching that's okay that's just the way it is. And, oh, could I have done it? Let's see if I can pick up the smallest amount. Maybe I can. So let's take this thread out. Just goes to show you that you can remove your thread if you're not happy with what you've done. So we're starting again. I have to re-thread my needle. Okay, so I'm gonna still go with my quarter inch stitch, but I just wanna pick up this colored wool. I'm not picking up anything underneath. And again, I have to see where my stitch is and just pick up a little bit of that patterned fabric, leaving the white underneath alone. And I'm holding down that small bit of wool fabric that we're going through so I don't rip it. And one long stitch, and then I'm going to mosey across up the top. And I left a little bit, I went to the top of that um, colored line. So I'm going to, You know what, I'm going to continue with this top line so then I don't have any knots in the back. I'll have enough thread to just go continue with my line like that, go lower, do my second line. So that's my plan. So let's, I always work this way. So with where my needle is pointing upward. So my long stitch, just pick up the pink fabric, but I'm holding it so I don't tear the threads. And pick another bit up. Holding between my finger and my thumb the, everything so I don't break that little bit of thread. There. So I'm doing a long long running stitch, but the running stitch is a Kathleen running stitch because there are such small bites that I'm picking up here. Running stitch, I believe, should be the same distance or usually is if you do proper stitching. So I'm going to go, oh, ouch, and I always poke myself. So I'm going down in my the frame. Okay, so I have cordoned off areas here for what I want to do next. I want a double line. So I'm just going to go down, but I want a space in between. So let's go with, I have to come down. Let's go in between right here. But I don't want to see that thread there. So I know I'm going to go down here. So I'm just going to hide the thread. in between the two layers and come up where I wanted to come up. Oh, am I too low? There we are. 
so we're going down and we're hiding that thread and I did leave that little stitch in there. So now we are going to try to do stitches that are parallel to what's there. So like that. So it's me figuring out how how um oh geez I don't want to pick up that white oh, okay you have to feel it with your needle and that's just I'm holding it down so I don't tear that wool and yes I've got large stitches here so let's see I want a large stitch here and I'm gonna come up I have to lay it down I lost sight of my thread here Okay, so I want to go down here and up there. Uh-oh, how come I have? And this is definitely a no-name brand because the threads are separating. And that's why I, I wish I could have more color selection in my Pearl cottons when I run out of my <laughs> oh dear god I don't want to cut that what is happening okay so I have a I have an error here because there's a a knot oh. so there's a big big knot I've made a knot here and I don't know how to fix this here I somehow okay what did I do? Did I put my, oh, okay. My needle is through there, but I can't see it. Let's try this. Did I make it worse? Yep. I can't see. Here, let's undo this thread and let's just pull it through. I'm gonna try to fix this. There. See, that's why I don't like my threads. There's six threads, and if they separate, you have grief. Scissors. Let's make this straight so we can thread our needle. I don't do time-lapse videos. I don't do speeding up i don't have a pause button because i don't have a special video or this is my iphone so how i stitch is just how long it takes me i'm not a computer person my back can't take sitting at the computer so that some people may have beautiful stuff set to music you just have me and my stitching on an iphone from my bed okay and in my bed because i have back issues okay let's go down here and I'm gonna go all the way through the fabric only because I have to see where my design is going so I did one I'm coordinating off sections so this is like and this is just a single line hmm do I want to keep going with a double line hmm Yes, we're going to go with a double line. So how far do we have to go? We have to go about like this. Okay, so I'm just going to go under a bit and through. Whoops, I have to go on the other side of the line. Okay, this looks like it's going to be okay. And yes, you might see a little bit of that, but... Oh, well, that's the way it is. Hand stitching. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, it's quite a bit of ways. Let's see if I can go in that hole and just move over slightly. Okay, yes, I was able to move over slightly. So my line... There we are. And so 
so I'm creating a double line with this dark green. This line, this thread line has to be a little bit smaller because I need two stitches in there. And so let's go to the bottom in between. So it'll be just before this. I have to go right through the fabric. And okay, I like the way that is. Let's tie a knot. Holy horror, Lord, I must have been holding my breath. I feel dizzy. Okay, let's get rid of this. All right, and so we need some seed stitches, and this okay, I have seed stitches, I have X's, and I have French knots. So let's see what I want to do. My French knots, I want to have like this, like a letter S. Let's do that first. So my French knots, I, I know I want to have in, oh, where's my ecru? I'm going to have in ecru, ballet pink, and bubblegum pink. So the darker pink is what I'm going to start with, and I have one knotted already and done up. And my line of line of French knots and loose French knots is going to be here. So I'm going to start right here. And the that first one is going to be a colonial knot. It's actually just a single knot French knot like that. But whenever I do a single French knot, single wrap French knot, I like to do a colonial knot because it sits better. So my, I make a, a clock, clockwise loop. My needle hits the thread, finger touches it, around and down and pull. And then it sits nice and beautiful. So that's one. I'll make another one over here in between. And I'm doing it uh, uh, that way. And now let's do another colonial. So French, which is a single French knot around. I needle finger around and down and pull. I'm holding the needle and pulling the thread tight and pulling it through. So it just sits very pretty. Let's just continue. I'm following the design. So the next one. Okay, so now I will do a loose French knot. So my loose French knots is I'm gonna anchor my baby finger, pull my thread tight, one, two, three, finger on the needle, down, and I just kind of make it, make my loops nice. You saw I pulled that slightly to straighten that thread. Make my loops nice, my circles. Hold those circles with my finger and my thumb and push my needle through. And it's just gonna tack, tack it down. It's gonna tack the circles down. So there we are, we're done. Whenever I make a French, I sorry, a loose French knot, I tie a knot in the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to do, I'm following this design. I'm going to have one here and one here. Let's do just a, I'm going to do a, uh, let's do a, a, a French knot with three. One, two, three. Go down. And then I'm going to hold the needle and pull my thread tight. Scooch it down the, ne the needle so it's tight. This is a regular French knot. And you'll see how much bigger the French knot is here versus there. Because when I start, I have little guys, medium-sized guys, smaller and smallest. So the next one I'm going to bring up here. I would like a 
loose French knot and anchor your thumb, your baby finger, one, two, three, finger, down, hold the thread, make little circles nicely, hold the circles with the two thumb and the finger and anchor it shut. Tie a knot, knot because it's a loose French knot. I don't want my circles to come undone. Let's go. Okay, my we're just looking at the design aspect in the letter S. So I want to come out maybe here. I want to do another loose French knot here. And one, two, three, finger down. Hold the working thread straight. Make your circles. And I pull my circles clockwise. Hold them down. Pick, pick it up, hold it, and secure the loops, my circles. Because it's a loose French knot, I'm going to tie that. And Okay, so let's go with, I'm doing that little S shape. So let's go with a French knot in here, a loose French knot. Whoops, I want to go in between the pink, right in the middle. I'm following the design. I'm working with the design of the fabric. And another loose French knot. Baby finger, one, two, three, finger. Anchor, pull my thread straight, make my circles with my finger down the needle, turning clockwise. They look nice. Hold that and push. Anchor that. If you make shapes, flowing shapes, you'll have unity. If I just put, put one, two, three, four, all over the place it won't look unified but once you see all the different colors going in you can follow the fly stitch or the feather stitch i mean you can follow the buttonhole stitch and you can follow the two lines parallel lines you'll also be able to follow the loose french knots so let's go let's go right here I hope I didn't pull that out. No, I didn't. So I would like to have a, a, a regular French knot here. I'm going to get smaller with my knots. So one, two, three. Place it down. I am pulling my thread tight, holding my needle, pulling my thread tight, and pushing through. That's a three-wrap French knot. Let's go over here with a two wrap French knot, two wrap French knot. I'm going to get smaller, three, two, and one. So two is just one, two, down and pull, and pull through here. So I didn't pull it tight enough around the needle, so they both look the same size. And I am going to go right there with my last one. And I'll just do a ouch, single wrapped French knot. So let's just go one wrap and down and pull my thread tight. Pull the needle through. Okay, that's it for my bubble gum. I'm going to go with the, and I ran out of thread, so that's good. Tie a knot, clear my needle, and let's cut this off. And where are we? This is the ballet pink. So we're going to fill in here. So let's just start, let's start here. And... Okay, my husband talks so loud, he has an army guy here picking up his medals. Okay, so we're going to make a single knot, single wrapped French knot. 
pulling it tight and down. I'm going to move over here and I am I'm filling in my line. I want to do a colonial knot now. So let's go with a make. Okay, how come my thread is twisting? So let's just lay it down clockwise. My needle hits the thread, finger around and into. So then I pull my thread so they're tight and then pull my needle through. And I say that to myself, even when I'm not doing the filming, my colonial knots, I have to. Okay, so let's do a regular French knot up here. I'm filling in this line. So let's just do three. So one, two, three, go down, pull. I'm lucky, try not to get those loops, pull tight and you have a, just a regular French knot. Oh, Jacques, barking up a storm. Sometimes it's hard to tell the one wrap, the two wraps, and the three wraps. So let's leave that there. Let's get another, another um, regular three wrapped French knot. One, two, three. Tight. Pull, roll. There we go. We just about had a loose French knot there. And pull. And let's see here. Oh, what do I want? I, I don't want to go more to the right. I want to stay in here. So I'm going to come up in the middle here. And I'm going to do a loose French knot. So pinky finger, one, two, three, hold, down, pull, lay it flat and pull clockwise till you get the desired number of circles. Squeeze the circles and anchor it down with the thread. Because it's loose French knot, I'm going to knot the back. Okay, let's make a couple more of those loose French knots. Let's go in be let's go in between here. Pinky, one, two, three, finger. Down, hold the thread. Swirl clockwise. Hold those loops and secure. Make a knot. Now re-thread my needle. Okay, where are we? Let's make a French knot in here. One, two, three. I have to pull that down and pull the thread and pull through. Let's do one up here. <coughs> French knot, one, two, three. Oh, no, I want to do a loose French knot. Let's take that out. Let's do one, two, three, but we're just going to hold it. Go down. Hold the thread and clockwise this. Hold the threads and pull. Okay. Let's see. 
another loose French knot here. I might be running out of thread. And one, two, three, finger. Push the needle through, and I might have enough to do a French knot here. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, pull the thread and let's pull the needle through. And we're gonna be done with that because I don't have enough thread, and we're gonna tie a knot. And cut this off. I need more of this light pink. So let's take it again all the way to my right shoulder to my left fingers. Nice long piece. Tie a knot. I like how that's working out. I think that looks very pretty. like climbing flowers, I think. Oh boy. See? Aligning six threads is not <laughs> not always easy. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so let's have a look at our piece. Let's add, look, we're going to continue working down this way. So let's add a, let's go, this is our concentrated section. Let's go do another loose French knot here. Oh, is that it? Okay, so I have to pull my needle so I get longer thread. Pinky finger, one, two, three, finger, down, hold, and make your circles. The sun's coming out nice. Uh oh, I see some thread wanting to knot. Oh, you little, you little. Oh, okay, this must be no name non-slippery thread. Okay, because it's a French knot, and I say that for the thread because DMC has, it seems to have a slippery coating, so it doesn't knot as quickly for me. Okay, I'm gonna do a regular French knot here. Oh, I love when the sun comes out. One, two, three. Let's do another French knot over here. Three wrapped. One, two, three, down. Oh, I like that. And it looks like I caught that circle in. Okay, that's nice. And let's do a loose French knot right over here. One, two, three. Hold the thread, make the loops, pinch, and pull. Because it's a loose French knot, we're going to tie a knot on the back. So there's nothing fast about hand stitching. We're at one hour and 15 minutes, just about. Okay, here we are. Let's do another loose French knot. One, two, three. Oh, let's go up in here. Oh, 
please, dear God, don't let it have a, a knot. Okay, nice. those three I'm looking at like that as a triangle and that's how I position my stuff so one two three I look at it as triangles three points and go in the middle to fill it in and twist I love that I think that's so pretty and loose French knots I always make a knot in the back and we're going to continue. Let's make a French knot here, a three French knot, a three wrap. One, two, three. Pull the thread tight around the needle and in. And I want to have, hmm, let's just go with a circle, one, two, three French knot, three wrapped French knot. And we're not going to wrap it as tight, so it's kind of an in-between thing. So it's a loose French knot. Let's go here. Let's go a two French knot, one, two. Two wrapped. And here, let's do a colonial knot, so a loop, needle, finger, wrap. If I say that every time, even when I'm not on camera, I can do a colonial knot. Okay, so, uh, one right there, and we'll do a single. That looks there, but maybe I'll fill it in with the white. So uh, a single French knot, wrap it tight and pull. And is that it? Yes, because we're going to fill in with the ecru now. Let's cut this off. Okay, let's have a look and see which thread I, needle I like better. I like this one is wider. So let's go with that one. And we're gonna use ecru now. From the right shoulder to the left finger. And we are going to, this is a Milner's needle. I can tell because it has, it kind of goes up like a, a, a carrot to go off. It doesn't have a sudden sudden eye because for my looped stitches you need a long shaft that you can pull your stitches off. So now I'm going to fill in with the ecru and I'm just going to do a single. Let's just do a single wrap and in making sure we don't go in the Um, in the knot. Let's go here. So I'm that I this ecru is going really close to the existing stitches. And let's do. I did a single, so let's do a double. Let's do a triple in here. Next one. One, two, three. Tight and down. So we're just doing French knots. And let's do a French knot over here. Okay, why did this off? Because it was knotting up here. And let's just do a regular French knot up there. Move that loop out of the way. One, two, three. And pull. So we're 
else do we want to fill in? Let's go here. We're going to... Uh, I want three ecru loose French knots, and they're going to be one, two, and three in a triangle shape. So let's go one, two, three, finger, down. Let's lay this running thread, working thread flat. Make our circles. Pinch and pull. And I'm going to tie a knot to anchor this. Okay, so I want a French knot here. One, two, three, and down. Pulling the thread around the needle snugly. And this one will be a French, loose French knot. Oh, should I go down there? Up here? Yeah, we're going to go up here. One, two, three. And hold and make your loops. Tie a knot at the back. French knot in here. Now you know why it's in called encrusted because there are, it's just on top, on top, on top. You're layering, layering, and layering your stitches. Okay, and my, I'm going to make just a French knot in here. One, two, three, and down. I don't know if that was supposed to be a French. I forgot if I was doing a French knot or a loose French knot. Oh, well. Let's do... Let's do a loose French knot underneath here. And one, two, three, down. Okay, my husband's talking up a storm. Okay, and anchor it. Tie a knot at the back. And and let's see here. Let's do let's do a French knot. One, two, three. And I just choose, I usually have the bigger knots in the center of my clusters. And I usually have the uh, narrower the loose uh, the fewer wraps on the edges on the tips of these clusters so I'm going to still have a one two three and down and let's see here oh, oopsie are we there my battery is low it says so I will have to finish this off before it cuts me off. So I am just going to make a few more French knots and we'll call it quits. So if I, if the camera falls out or stops, it's because my battery died. One, two, three. I'm just making a couple of French knots now down to the tip. A couple of French knots down to the tip. One, two, three. and one, two, let's go three. Still filming, that's good. 
and maybe two more French knots. So this one will be a two wrap, one, two, and then the final one will be a single wrap. And hopefully we're still recording. Let's do a single wrap over here. One and down. I'm gonna do one more on the tip. One more here. Okay, what am I doing? I'm coming up this way. A single wrap and down. I was just looking, there's a some green thread in there. I have to pull it out. I don't know what, what that green thread is. Okay, tie this up and hopefully I won't finish suddenly. I will say this is it for the front cover. Let's have a look. Yes, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I will. Oh, that'll come out. It'll lay flat. I don't think it'll I'll add any more. I'm going to leave that there. Grab my pieces right here. So this is the front cover. These were the inside two pieces. So I'm just going to tuck these in here, put our needle book back together, and I'll, if I have, if this doesn't, battery doesn't die, I can show you what it looks like when it's full. So here we are. I will do a flip through of this needle book. If to show you what it looks like when it's done with the wrap. There you are. Let me know, Carol, if you're like this, if you if you wanted this needle book reserved for you. I'm gonna do the back. I'm running out of battery I have to plug in, and the back will be simpler. So I did the more, more um, embellished front cover. The back will be simpler. Thank you everyone for watching, and bye for now.